In this episode, we're discussing how to get over creative block with children's book illustrator Kay Meadows. If you'd like to see the entire interview, please click here. Otherwise, here's an excerpt with my interview with Kay Meadows. Kay Meadows, and I am a children's book illustrator and surface pattern designer. And I, pre I predominantly work in watercolor and uh, gouache and, and then mixed media as well. What are your best tips for getting over creative block? Well, um, for me, I find that if you will, you know, just try to draw just for a couple of minutes doing whatever, you know, you can, you can pick something in your, the room you're sitting in, or you can just, you know, whatever's on your mind, draw it you know, and just try to do it for two or three minutes. And then I, I find that when I do that, I tend to keep going, especially if it goes well. Now, sometimes you can hit a place where it's like, oh, this isn't going good. But the main thing is, is just to, to, to keep pushing yourself a little bit, like try to set five minutes to draw. I would recommend going longer, but if you, because a lot of times people just think I can't set aside 30 minutes, 30 minutes is just too much. Well, then try five minutes and see what happens. And more than likely, you're going to find that you will go a little bit longer because you're actually having fun. You know, you've, you've lost track of time because that's what happens with me when I create art. I lose track of time. So that's why I know I'm having a good time if I lose track of time. So um, so that's just one of the things I would certainly recommend. The other thing is, is if you can't find something that you want to paint, let's say you just don't like anything in your room <laughs> that you're looking at. Then go to find some challenges. Um, I did, uh, I don't know if you heard about the cup challenge on Instagram. It was um, no, Lori I... Siebert. Lori Siebert's the only artist name I can think of at the moment, but it was her and two other artists. They came together and created a challenge. It was a cup challenge and it was based on 15 different female artists over the years. And we were supposed to create a cup based on their artwork or them or whatever. And it was so much fun. And so that's another thing, find challenges. And even if you don't, like around Halloween, there's challenges everywhere for Halloween, you know? And even if you can't do every single one, if you'll just try to do two or three, whatever, you know? Cause sometimes you may run up against a theme you're thinking, I have no idea. Don't, don't sit there and sweat it. Just go ahead and find something else to do, you know? But there's challenges all over Instagram, so I highly recommend that. And then, of course, take some courses or get on YouTube and find some of the, the instructional courses that are um, on YouTube, you know. So there's really not an excuse to find something to draw or to paint. If nothing else, play with some new um, art mediums, you know. If you've been wanting to try out pen and ink, try out pen and ink, you know. I do recommend, this is one thing some people may not like me for, but I do recommend doing this traditionally. Because Procreate, um, you know, you can do things to make your lines perfect and things like that, you know? <laughs> I just started yeah. learning Procreate this week. There's a lot of cheating that can happen. Right, right. And then, you know what? There's nothing wrong with that if, you, if you're going to focus on Procreate and you're going to, because that's what Procreate's there for and it's great. But what I'm hoping will happen is if you will use um I would even recommend not using a pencil that that might freak some people out because what you're trying to do is number one, get over perfectionism. Secondly, you're trying to truly observe and, and have your hand and your eye work together and hopefully draw whatever it is you're trying to create. And, um, and it just helps you learn what your mark making is and what you do when you have an ink or if you're have you, if you're using watercolor or some kind of, paint or whatever. It doesn't even have to be, it could be acrylic, you know, whatever. So it just, it, it helps, I think it helps you get away from being such a perfectionist as well. I mean, it just, if you will not use a pencil, if you're able to hit command Z or erase something, then you're, you know, you're, you're still going to benefit, but it's better when you try to do it where you're not being so perfect. One of my favorite artists is it's, her name's Own, Own Mar Wynn, I think, or Own Wynn Mar, I forget how it goes. But she, her watercolor is so loose and fluid. And I promise you, I will never paint like her. But it's fun to watch her and how loose she is. She doesn't get bogged down with making sure every petal of the flower is perfect, you know. And so that's, 
when you start creating daily and you're just creating, you know, you just, you just have fun with it. And it just helps you, I think, truly find your voice and style. And that's the, another cool thing about daily creating is if you're, if you're painting something or you're working on something and you start seeing a theme, let's say one thing that shows up in my artwork a lot is hands. You'll start noticing things that you kind of are drawn to. So that's, a, that's your voice. That's something that symbol or whatever is um, helping you to, to see what you're drawn to. And then that starts showing up in your artwork and you're able to kind of explain why, you know, you've created something versus when you paint something every, let's say two times a year, you don't develop why you're doing it. You know, you may not be able to explain or talk about why you painted something. So, so that's why, you know, I think doing daily art whether it's in a sketchbook, you can do just a sketchbook or you can just do it on paper. It helps you start developing more so as an artist and your style and you'll start seeing how you handle, you know, the different types of mediums and, and you'll start seeing a look come from it as well. Really, it's the consistency because what happens is it's just like, you know, we mentioned Procreate. You know how if you, you learn something in Procreate and then you put Procreate for a long time, put it away for a long time, and come back, you're going to have to sit there and go, oh, where was that again? Where, you know, and it's, it's the same way with traditional artwork. You're not going to be as familiar with your watercolor or your acrylic paint. You're not going to have your flow going with how you have your stuff set up. You know, I have my, um, my studio table set up where, you know, all I'm right-handed. So all my paint, my, my water and my brushes are all to the right. Then I have my, um, my paper center, you know, and I have everything set up and I can get to things quickly. And so it's the consistency that makes the difference. It's not, I mean, obviously you're hopefully going to have quality at some point with your, when you're continually to do it. That's probably the two main things is just um, make a commitment to do art and then try to set up a time and tell everybody in your family, this is my time. This is what I'm doing. Please don't interrupt me. That kind of thing. Thanks for joining me for this excerpt. Again, if you'd like to see the full interview, please go ahead and click here. Otherwise, if you're new to this channel, I'm Aurora B. Here, I discuss my journey as an artist, what's worked for me, what hasn't, including the often taboo subject of making money from your art. If you'd like this interview excerpt, please let me know in the comments or hit the like button. Also, please consider subscribing and until next time, keep creating.